Welcome to the show, guys. Thank you so much for tuning in to Unaborted with Seth Gruber. We are just releasing a series of interviews and sit-downs with the phenomenal uh, lineup of speakers here at Love Life California, where we're taking back spiritual ground in California to redeem that statement, what happens in California doesn't stay in California, to apply it to righteousness in life rather than wickedness. I've been telling you about the conference. While we're here now recording interviews with people, I don't know when we'll release these, but we'll we'll release them in short order here. And so if you're listening to this now, this is being recorded at Calvary Chapel Chino Hills. Senior pastor Jack Hibbs, an abortion survivor. Many people don't know that story unless you watched his testimony and story at the conference today. He shared it publicly from the pulpit as well. And my good friend Melissa Odin, the founder and director of the Abortion Survivors Network. And so I've been wanting to get these two at the same table for a while. Very exciting. So let's not waste any time. Welcome to the show, guys. Melissa Odin, Jack Hibbs, thanks for tuning in. Thanks, Seth. This has been a long time coming. So right here. <laughs> I'm glad. Um, M- Melissa and I and a bunch of pro-lifers, Jack, were just in D.C., obviously. 150,000 probably at least people at marching least, for huh? life in, in Muriel Bowser's D.C., where you got to show your yellow star. I'm sorry, your, your <laughs> Vax passport yes. in order to, uh, to, to get into restaurants. And so, uh, so we did a phenomenal interview with Melissa Oden and Jen, one of the abortion survivors mm. there, sharing the story. One of the most powerful episodes uh, we'd ever filmed. Um, but Jack, you may you may be actually one of the one of the mo- most um, popular abortion survivors in the country. But but a lot of people don't know you're an abortion survivor. Mm-hmm. Yeah. You shared it before on Calvary Chapel magazine interview years ago. Yeah. But a lot of people don't know that, even though you're you share it from the pulpit. Um, it's just powerful. And you shared that story today in your message, yeah. opening up the conference. Um, so, I mean, you two have met now and talked some, but I would love for Melissa to sort of just frame this um, for, for us, Jack, and for those listening. Um, Melissa, what is it like yeah, to live in a culture, a, in a society, under an administration mm-hmm. that tells you that, that, that you should be dead? Mm-hmm. That you don't have a right to be alive. We talk about this all the time. Yeah. You guys know Melissa Odin's one of the most you know frequented guests on on this little humble little podcast. But we talk about this all the time, right? That if reproductive health care is a great thing, and choice is a good thing, and and a mom wants that choice, she wants the choice of reproductive health care. Well, it would follow then that a failure to procure said reproductive health care would be tragic and sad. I paid for this. Why didn't I get? My choice. Mm. Well, uh, uh, the failure to procure said reproductive health care, that failure is a person right. who survived a procedure that their mother and or father uh, paid a hitman to carry out. Uh, and, and so we did that episode with you and Jen. I'm sure our listeners were crying listening to that. But um, just to have you guys here together, like, talk about that. Like, what is that like to live in a society that, that not only tells you you don't have a right to live, but celebrates Right. The decision that nearly took your life. Yeah. And to put it into context, too, the survivor he's talking about, Pastor Hibbs, is a survivor named Jennifer Milborn. She's actually here this weekend. She's a member of my team who Great. serves abortion survivors. Great. But she's from here in California. We have eight documented abortion survivors in California. You're one of them. Yeah. You never knew you were on my list. Yeah. You're on my list. <laughs> you made the list. I'm honored. <laughs> But it's, it's true. And I was thinking about that this morning when I was listening to you share your story. I've known your story for a long time. And I have a book about abortion survivors coming out later in September of 2022. But I was listening to you speak this morning and, of course, was thinking, he is one of us. Mm. And we see one another. And we I see it in your eyes. I know the pain. And... The joy, though, at the same time that comes from knowing Mm -hmm. that God spared our lives and he had a purpose and a plan for us. But we live in a culture that wants to say that we don't exist. Failed abortions don't happen. That's right. You don't exist, Pastor Hibbs. I don't exist. Jen doesn't exist. And I think when I think about your story, and we serve a lot of survivors through the network who survived coat hanger attempts to abort. Yes or Yikes. illegal attempts. We live in a society that wants to even in some ways shame people like you more oh, than me. Yeah, You're the reason why abortion had to be legalized. Mm-hmm. Wow. I am, um, wow. You're causing me to remember, we were up in Sacramento and we were appearing before the state Senate on, a, on a, another issue. And if you've ever been up there, they, it's basically like a cattle car topic, group of people, 100 group, 50 group of people going in to testify for their next topic. Right. We were there um, on an unrelated topic to abortion. 
walking out of the state capitol, there were pro-choice groups going in and they had their signs. And there was this young woman, I'm gonna guess and say maybe early 20s, and I said to her, I said, I just want you to know something. I said, I, I appreciate your um, ability to express yourself in this free country, mm -hmm. but I just want you to know something that uh, my mother attempted an abortion on me and I had a chance to live and I'm very, very happy about being alive. Whoa. And I'm very happy to be here. And she said, how sad that you lived. She mm -hmm. said that. She said, how sad that you lived. I actually <laughs> thought so that she was flip. the first <laughs> statement. You know, she was very clear. And I first thought that she was saying, she's, she's, she's has some compassion. Right. How sad that you lived. Wow. And just brazen. But have you, here's the great thing about what you just said. And I said it today, is I didn't go back to my room and suck my thumb <laughs> and curl up in the fetal. Um, when you realize that there's a God that commands the universe, and by the way, the greatest universe of, of all is what takes place inside. That's right. Uh, when he preserves your life and you find out about that, then it really didn't matter what that young lady had to say. I actually hope that it maybe uh, wears upon her. But it's mm -hmm. not wearing upon me because for us, there's a there's a galvanizing mm -hmm. that takes place in this culture. That's right. And I'm a real advocate of whatever someone's argument might be. I can't, you know what, I can't be loved or I can't love or I can't be this or that because I was abused as a child or I was whatever, whatever. No, no, no. This is the great thing about the God that we serve is that he is the redeemer. Mm -hmm. And if your story's broken the most, oh man, are you a gem? That's right. Because he's got a big plan. That's right. Mm -hmm. That's right. We, we talk, as and I want Melissa to talk to this right now, but we talk about Jack How like everyone in our culture and society acknowledges that, that like trauma mm -hmm. that is inflicted on children will fundamentally impact and oftentimes transform the type of individual that they become. And often for bad, apart from the grace of God and his redemptive story, his mm -hmm. redemptive gospel, like especially when children are abused. Like yeah. that's the funny thing about this stupid conversation of mm -hmm. abortion true. and so abortion true. survivors is we say, even pro-choicers, Jack, right? They'll yeah. say, oh you, oh, you were raped and, and, and hit and abused as an infant. That's really bad. And pro-choicers will get angry about that. Yep. And, and because we know that even if that child doesn't remember that trauma, right. it's going to impact them for the rest of oh, their absolutely. life. Absolutely. Unless that trauma occurs in the womb. Yeah. Isn't that something? So what's so talk to Jack and, and just everyone, Melissa, about um, what's it what's it like as an abortion survivor to just be told over and over and over again by a president, an administration, a culture, a university, a media mm. that, that says, oh, oh, I'm sorry you're alive. Or <laughs> you're, you're lying. You're yeah. lying. That, was, that doesn't right. happen. Well, it's right. cultural gaslighting is well, what yeah, it is. It totally yeah. is. You True. know, we are gaslighted on a regular basis. And it happens a lot of times in families uh, when there's not healing after a failed abortion. It happens mm. throughout our culture. And that's part of the work that I know that I'm called to do. People know me for fighting. And uh, obviously, we're born fighters. That's right. Uh, I'll <laughs> That's take right. it. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, we'll yeah. take it. But in reality, we're also having to help people heal so they can yeah. have that galvanized steel yeah. to be able to face people in the public square and say, you know what? You feel sad for me. You know, you feel right. sad that I survived. Yeah. No, 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 no. Right. No. You should feel sad for yourself that you can't see my dignity and value. That's right. Well, exactly right. And the comeback could be exactly what we said earlier is, um, oh, really? You're sad that I survived? Well, I just want you to know something. Because I survived that, uh, there's actually more science and more fuel and more passion in my yeah. tank That's right. yeah, yeah, than yeah. what you have in your tank. Yeah, yeah. Because truth, truth is what you need to gravitate toward. That's right. And at the end of the day, listen, people can lie all they want. But in the marathon, truth's the only one that crosses the line, yeah, yeah, you yeah. know? Yeah, because truth is never afraid of a lie. Uh, yeah. You know, it's interesting, Jack and Melissa, because, you know, we have no toleration in our society for victim blaming. <laughs> yeah. Right? Like, right. oh, you were raped? <laughs> what were you wearing? Yeah. Like, like, nobody tolerates that kind of language, right. and rightly so. Yep. But if you're an abortion survivor victim, yeah. then the response of the culture of death is, shut up. Yeah. That didn't happen. That's a lie. So what does that tell us mm -hmm. about their more deeper and sinister beliefs and motives, mm -hmm. right? Uh, because I, so Jack, I often refer to Melissa as the bane 
of the pro-abortion movement. <laughs> I mean, they're deaf. I, I'm convinced, Jack, that Chuck Schumer and Nancy Pelosi yeah. wake up like having <laughs> wet, wetted the bed yeah. when they think about Melissa coming to testify on on the Hill, which she right. did multiple times. Like, oh no, it's Melissa Odin again and the abortion survivors. Because she asks this beautiful question, Jack. Right. She says, how could the act that nearly took my life simultaneously be my fundamental right to exercise. That's amazing. Isn't that oh, beautiful? Oh my goodness. Yeah, it's, it's beyond beautiful. I mean, think about it. The, um, the, the fact that as a culture where now in this moment, it is so unacceptable. We've can't, uh, in fact, during the COVID experience in California, at one point, Gavin Newsom had said, we are not gonna back off until there's zero death. Yeah, I remember that. Remember that? And I thought, wow, I wish he had that kind of passion toward abortion. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> wow, what a double standard. You know, I don't know if you guys saw this. Last week um, on Nancy Pelosi's uh, Instagram, I believe it was, she announced, you know, in California last week, she's running for re-election. I saw that. And she said, <sighs> did you see it? It says that she's running for the children. For the children, yeah. <laughs> And I reposted that, and I thought, for the children, Disgusting. the children are running and hiding. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And what children are you talking about? Yeah. The aborted children? Yeah. How is it that your policies yeah. and your legislative demands uh, are for children? Everything she does yeah. is anti-child. Mm -hmm. That's right. It's absolutely insane. You know, it's as Pastor Hibbs is talking about that encounter he had with somebody, it makes me think, I thought of you actually at the airport last week when I was coming home from the March for Life. Right. I had a connection at an airport, I was watching the football game, and in the midst of this like lovely encounter I'm having with a woman, she's asking me questions, what do you do? And I always kind of start at the you basement, be, uh -huh. right? Uh, well, Feel you know, yeah. I'm an author, I run a nonprofit, <laughs> I serve people who have experienced trauma. Yeah. And she kept asking Ooh, more questions. Wow. <laughs> I know, but then, and right, and she was, we were feeling it, we uh -huh. were friends. Everything's going. And then she starts asking me more questions about political work, and I said, <laughs> You know, oh, I go and I testify before Congress frequently and he, people either love me or hate me. It is what it is. And of course, Here that piqued her curiosity. And when she finally said, and who are you advocating for? And I said, I'm advocating for children who survive failed abortions. <laughs> yeah, exactly. The look on her face it was, oh. was crushed. <laughs> and she said, well, I'm actually pro-choice. And I said, OK. And what is this like for you right now? And she said, well, I feel really feel, sad. Feel. Those children who experience failed abortions must be all disabled and live such terrible lives. And I said, wow. no, it sh actually, if you passed most of us on the street, you would never <laughs> guess that we are who we are. Yeah. And the look on her face was like, what's right. going on right now? That's right. And the That's game- That's true. That's true, Jack. A lot of abortion survivors don't bear the injuries no. of yeah. failed abortion. Yeah. I mean, continue, Melissa. Yeah, sure. Yeah, and our, in our, our experiences show that most of our wounds are internal, right? If you wouldn't, exactly. have, if you wouldn't have told the world your story, right. no one would have known. Yeah. Exactly right. So exactly right. Wow. So that's why I call the Abortion Survivors Network the, the bane of the yeah, pro-abortion movement. Because they're almost like, I think I said this at a, uh, oh, Melissa and I did an event uh, l last summer, Jack, at Josh Blevins uh, yeah. Church. Oh, now, sure. At uh, Grace, uh, Grace Calvary Chapel yeah. in yeah. St. Joseph, Missouri. He, sure. he had me on a Sunday morning and then Melissa and I for an evening event. Perfect. And I think I might have said it there. It just sort of slipped. Sometimes God gives you a certain way to phrase something, sure. you know. And I, I said that abortion survivors are almost like sort of the, the escaped prisoners uh, from the prison of secular progressivism. Wow. Uh, right, because you weren't supposed to survive that. Because That's now, right. as a survivor of abortion, dang it, Melissa, Jack. Yeah, you're you a, don't you're fit a the walking, narrative. Yeah, you're exactly. exactly. You're a walking contradiction, right? Because yeah. because it forces the American public to acknowledge this self-evident statement. Yep. You today are the same person that you were in the womb. Yeah. And that's why it's hard to deal with the reality that your mother tried to kill you. If you were an insensate blob of pregnancy tissue, Jack, and you weren't a <laughs> well, person then, yeah. then the abortion attempt on your life wouldn't affect you because at that stage of development, you weren't a person yet. But, so it's, mm -hmm. it, it blows up the entire But notice where, notice where this woman wanted to be right. in her world, in her bubble. Let's be honest, it's her That's bubble. Right. She 
wanted to think, oh my goodness, well, how hideous would a, exactly. a, sub a abortion survivor be? Right. Third eye, nine legs, <laughs> you know, wow. Yeah, yeah. No, no, actually normal. And the normal is what freaked her out. Yeah. The normal is wow. we can't have this. We can't have this kind of reality because why? Look, as a pastor, we can't have that kind of talk, she would say, because I would argue from as a pastor's from a pastor's perspective is well, because God is God. He redeems broken things and he can do anything. Right. And he's ultimately the one that we will answer to yeah. in the end. And that doesn't fit your box. Mm -hmm. And right. so you're troubled by this. That's right. But um I actually think that with more and more technology, as you guys know way more than I do, that with the development of technology, you've got kids today that are pregnant looking at mm -hmm. either graphic representations by computer design or actual some sort of, 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 of ultrasound, you know, ultrasound yeah. technology where, wait, this is in me? Th yeah. You mean this is what's going on now? There's a heartbeat at yeah. this day? That's changing things. And why do I love, I love mating the science argument to the biblical argument mm -hmm. because right. they will not contradict each other. That's yeah. right. And it not only forces people, look, it's, it, it would be great if the whole nation was pro-life. That would be great. But what we want even more than that is we want people to meet the God that mm -hmm. created life. Yeah, that's right. Mm -hmm. And that's the great win. But we start somewhere, right? In California, you got to start somewhere. And so in this state, we constantly battle, and we have won tremendous battles only to have them taken from us from court. For example, yeah. we won. We, this church was one of three other churches that crafted the Prop 8 verbiage language for the defense of marriage in Proposition 8. Yeah. We won. That's right. We won. It became law. We as, of, as of today, and then the, the Constitution today. in the state of California says marriage is between a man and a woman. Yeah. But Judge Von Walker, a practicing homosexual, uh, changed, uh, he put a stay on that. Oh, I couldn't have made it. And then three weeks <laughs> later, guess. retires. Remember yeah, that? He made. retires. Yeah. Point being is this. We've won some huge, mm -hmm. huge battles. Uh, but we come up against these secondary walls. But yeah. that's okay. Yeah. Here's the deal. You see, some, somebody might say, why should I fight in California? Because you fight for what's right, even if you're fighting on Mars. It's yeah. ridiculous. Mm -hmm. It doesn't matter where you're fighting. Are you fighting for what's right? And well, what right. if we lose? It doesn't matter if we lose. That's right. We're going to fight for what's right. And so right. right now in California, what we're excited about is we just went through the largest governor recall in American history, That's mind right. you. So, yeah, supposedly we failed. doesn't matter. But here's what's happening. Think of this. In 2020 November, four congressional seats were lost by the Democrats that they didn't even try to defend because they were so strong Democrat pro-abortion Right. Strongholds. Those four seats were flipped by four pro-life candidates yeah. in California. Nobody talked about that on CNN. Of course. And it's it's going to happen again in this 2022. This November, mm -hmm. yeah. It's happening again. And what's being talked about? I was on the phone yesterday for hours uh, with a candidate that's running in San Diego. Yeah. All about pro-life. Great guy, yeah. All about pro-life. Pro-life. Why? Because young people care. Yeah. This is not just a Christian thing. Yeah. Young people are waking up to, you know what? It's kind of a it's kind of a wrong thing <laughs> yeah. to kill something that I know is alive. That's right. Yeah, that is the will of the people. That is right. That's right. You're exactly correct. I've I uh, I've often said that abortion, being pro-abortion, always entails a certain level of self-hatred because mm. it's a really weird thing to say. Because if you're right, right, remember the Reagan, Reagan. line. Yeah, like, yes. I've noticed everyone who's for abortion has already been born, and that's right. why this podcast is called Unaborted. Right. We're all unaborted human beings. Um, but when you're pro-choice, here's the thing: all pro-choice people are born people. Right. That's another way to spin Reagan. Yeah. So what are they saying? They're saying my mother had a right to dismember me in the womb. It's like, well, d oh, uh, that's kind of weird, dude. Do you hate yourself? Like, and, and it's like yeah, Melissa will ask, like, when did my rights to bodily autonomy begin? Right. Right, like when yeah. did my rights be in? But I'm going to go out on a limb and just cast out a vision here, Jack, since you're such a visionary. Um, imagine hundreds of abortion survivors throughout America on university campuses, in churches, conferences, telling their story and meeting the culture of death head on. Because you should see the reaction, Jack, maybe you have, of, of, of people like Nancy Pelosi and Chuck Schumer and all these bigots on Capitol Hill when people like Melissa and others yes. have told their stories. 
actually briefly, Melissa, tell us one story that comes to mind of, of like how you've seen the facial expressions, the body language, like when these people react on Capitol Hill to you telling your story. We've talked about some of it, like Busy Phillips and others, but talk yeah, about that, like, like what the truth does when it comes from the bane of the pro-abortion movement while the culture of death just like, you know. Mm. Well, there it's always so dismissive, you know, as mm. a woman, you know, it's supposed to be about championing women, but we know that that is so <laughs> not the case. It's only certain women yeah. who are right. supposed to have a seat at the table and have a voice. <laughs> you know, I always say, Jack, if I was actually a pro-abortion, abortion survivor, I think the other side would actually give me a voice because, <laughs> because it fit their narrative. Right, yeah, right, right. So yeah. their issue isn't even necessarily about... It's right, ideological uniformity. Right, it is. Yeah. It, that's all it is. But, you know, what I tend to see is it's kind of that... Um, you know, I actually I was joking the other day what it's like to be there. They're always yelling time, 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 trying mm. to cut me off time. She's going over. Yeah, yeah. Right. Do anything in order to avoid the truth from coming out. And right. so you can see that it's the, you know, not wanting to make eye contact when you're trying mm -hmm. to connect with them on the human level to say, you know what, you were as much you in the womb as you are now as I was when I, my life was being attacked by an abortion. <laughs> you can just see that really, that attempt to disassociate yeah, it's from reality. Of course. Uh, but I've, I've heard everything, you know? I think one of my favorites is usually, what happened to her was illegal. <laughs> what? <laughs> no, it was legal and that's what you're fighting to have upheld. Why is it suddenly illegal when- Isn't that something? When inconvenient. it's inconvenient yeah. for your conversation right. right now and your fight. It's so sad to say, but you strip it all away and they would be just fine and happy. The conclusion is this, we would be way happier, fine, hmm. glad, concluding this argument if you had never been born. Yeah. And you. We don't That's want right. this discussion. You don't understand. Back away from the table. Time, time. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> We don't want this discussion because the yeah. fact is you should have never been here. You don't you don't fit mm -hmm. into the world that we are trying to establish. Yes. The freakish thing That's is right. all of us who have gone through the most basic science in junior high and high school, you cannot sit there and study all these things and be discussing while you're looking at the microscope. Hey, how do we kill this thing? Right. Do we pour acid on this? <laughs> what is this we're looking at? It's a frog. Yeah, yeah, yeah. How do we kill it? Nobody thinks like that. Mm -hmm. I mean, if you think like that, you need to see someone. <laughs> and we don't want to grow up in your neighborhood. You can right, grow right, up to right. be an animal, <laughs> yeah. right? Think about yeah. it. People naturally love life. Why does some, look, I'm a pastor. I'm with people when they're passing. Mm -hmm. And some believers, I get it. They're saying, Jesus, here I come. But most people want to live. If there was a cure at the table sitting right there in a cup, they would take it. Mm -hmm. Why? They want to live. Yeah. What kind of a person? What kind of a spirit? A spirit I like age. what Dennis, you know, exactly. You know, Dennis Prager says in a great one of his five minute videos, he said, you can, he said, I believe in, in a woman's right to her own body. I, I believe in a woman's uh, right to choose regarding her own body, 100%. He said, the problem that ends when she's pregnant because now there's somebody else's body inside of her. Mm -hmm. And it's just so crystal clear. Yeah. It's just so clear. So I believe because I'm narrow-minded, I'm one of those knuckle-dragging bigots. Um, <laughs> a, deplorable. A, a, a deplorable. Irredeemable. That um, God is real. God loves life. That's right. It's a pretty amazing ride if you let him That's right. have control of it. Yeah. And uh, that if we believe the Bible, there's another team That's right. out there that traffics in darkness and hopelessness. That's right. That's right. And look what they produce. I mean, just look at the history of their decision making. That's right. It's just sad, death, and it's ruinous to the yeah, human spirit. That's right. But I think that all circles us back to your first question, Seth, which was, you know, what is it like to live in this society? And it many times feels until you find that healing and your faith really solidifies you, it feels like you are marginalized. Mm. Um, not represented in our culture, that you are, you know, full of shame, you're silenced, you don't fit in, all of those things. And that's what this culture of death wants for people like Pastor Hibbs and I, uh, is yeah. for us to feel so discouraged, so downtrodden, so 
so isolated that we would never, ever, ever in a million years share our story, that's speak right. out, that's right. or find a community. Yeah. That's, that's exactly what they right. want. That's right. You stay silent. Yeah, and that's what the Love Life California Conference is about. Is not just mm. uh, abortion survivors, but um, but all of us um, who are alive because our mothers made the right choice mm -hmm. of speaking life and standing against the culture of death. As, as we sort of close out here because of time, and uh, Pastor Jack is a very wanted speaker, so he's heading <laughs> off to another conference to fire people up for righteousness in this moment. Uh, but Melissa, briefly talk about your book. And then what I would love to see, and I'm just going to go out on a limb here, I want to see abortion survivors conferences. Mm -hmm. um, I want to see them on stages of churches. If we can find, if we can, like That'd I said awesome. in my talk, Jack, bottle your moral, spiritual clarity and courage and inject it as a booster shot into the arms of American pastors yep. to get them to stand. And and we have lots of those men that we know in our, in right. our network who and are standing growing. for righteousness. Just imagine what, so, you know, people are like, oh, Seth, you're so good at convicting people and waking them up. Imagine, Jack, what, what 10 abortion survivors on a stage of a church yeah. would do to helping believers understand what we're apathetic towards and tolerating uh, so, when, when here are the escaped victims of abortion. So, Seth, just, how, how, just, can, how can someone say no to that type of Yeah, so we need to idea. get you on stage with them. We need abortion survivors everywhere, college campuses, challenging this bigotry and making the demons in the spirit of the age uh, urinate in their pants uh, because this is the great conservative consolation. Reality always reasserts itself in the end. Oh, yeah. It always does. Again, truth, truth always does. Truth is never afraid of a lie, yep. but the lie is always deathly afraid of the truth. That's right. So that's what I envision. We'll have to get you guys working together somehow. But awesome. Melissa, tell us about your book as we wrap up. Yes. Yeah, it's um, actually kind of still under wraps who the publisher is, but I can tell you it's a major Christian publisher. It's nice. co-authored with a best-selling author of other pro-life books. It'll come out probably in September of 2022. Working title right now is Abortion Survivors Break Their Silence. Wow. It's wow. going to tell about 12 other abortion survivor stories. And some of them, those survivors are still very young, so mm -hmm. children under the age of 10. So their mothers are actually cool. sharing their stories of experiencing failed abortions. So if we live in a culture that doesn't want to create a space for people like Pastor Hibbs and myself, mm -hmm. I have you know, really accepted it as my calling to create a space for our stories Amen. to be heard. Yeah. Powerful. <sighs> Yeah. Well, we'll uh, we'll have you back on, of course, Melissa, when the book comes out and sh you'll share some of those yeah. stories. So, Jack, you're a hero. Melissa, you're the bane of the pro-abortion <laughs> movement. Thank you. And for... you're the glue that ties us all together. <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah. Thanks Megaphone. for being at the conference, guys. Thank yeah. You, Thank you, guys. Uh, guys, thanks so much for tuning in. Uh, we're going to keep rolling these episodes out, on, and I'm sure it's going to bless you a lot. Uh, what a blessing to be united in this season. I think you sense that God sort of bringing together people across uh, Protestant and Catholic lines, across denominational lines, uh, against faith lines, mm -hmm. organizational lines, who people just kind of stop caring about their branding and their lane mm -hmm. and their focus because this is the Kairos turning point. This mm -hmm. either will lead to a new birth of freedom and life in America or we will descend back into the despotic chapters of history where we won't even be able to stand freely in the public That's square right. on behalf of life because mm -hmm. Newsom's like, oh, if you if you pick it outside of vaccination sites, we'll arrest you. Oh, Planned Parenthood provides vaccinations. Like the explicit attack against sidewalk counselors and those who want to stand for the life of the pre-born couldn't be greater. So it's time to stand. Mm -hmm. Thank you guys for tuning in. Follow Jack Hibbs. Follow Melissa Odin, of course. Uh, go get fired up. As I always say, go share this with your pro-choice friends and say, hey, I have some questions about your bigotry. I was just wondering if you had any answers to these. Truth is self-evident. Life is self-evident. Mm. It's time for us to stand. Thank you so much for joining the show. We'll see you next week. I'm Seth Gruber, and this is Unaborted. <laughs>